Let's have a look at Dead Cells, a fast-paced, roguelike, metrovania-style 2D action platformer by indie game studio Motion Twin. It's available on most gaming platforms and for PC, so we can all enjoy this one. The game pits you as an executed prisoner, brought back from the dead, working to escape prison and fighting your way across a perilous island to slay the island's king. As a roguelite styled game, you gain weapons, treasure and other items through procedurally generated evolving levels while always remembering that here, there are no second chances, lives or otherwise, as death means starting all over from the beginning. Thankfully, this game offers much in the way of unlockable content including weapons and upgrades to make your next attempt just a little bit more interesting. There is a huge arsenal of weapons to be discovered in drops, chests, stores and strewn sparingly throughout the game. They range considerably in style from short range swords, clubs, mallets and frying pans, range weaponry such as bows, throwing knives, lightning whips and even breathing fire and ice. You can also carry shields to reduce damage and parry attacks. Additionally, there are some items and accessories ranging from traps, lures, grenades and turrets among many others. Initially, weapons and items found are low tier, doing the least damage with few bonuses but get progressively better as you progress through the game, all of which can be upgraded and have the bonuses or mutations re-rolled between levels to better suit your setup and playing style. Mutations and weapon attributes also include damage over time effects such as bleeding, poisoning and burning, while others can increase damage cause explosions upon death and quite a few other interesting side effects. There are three primary damage types, or in this case colors, that your weapons and items will throw down during gameplay. Each item can be affected by one or two types, and damage output is buffed by seeking out and using scrolls, and choosing to increase one damage type by 15% while also buffing your hit points by a varying degree. This allows you to strategically upgrade or focus on damage output however you like. Levels or biomes as I call them here vary significantly in style and include a prison, sewers, ramparts, graveyards and many more. They aren't hard to navigate at all and a map is always available to show your current position and anything important missed along the way. Biomes consist of a wide variety of obstacles and enemy models and types from your basic melee zombies, ranged infantry, ninjas, weird and wacky creatures and quite a few others. And then add to this you'll periodically face elite units who will drop some nice goodies while extremely powerful bosses drop tons of fantastic loot. Between levels you'll meet the collector who stores your found blueprints and allows you to spend cells to permanently unlock them. You'll also be able to apply mutations. These include things like damage bonuses, speed increases, applying damage while dodging and so on. Here you'll also be able to spend coins to upgrade or re-roll secondary effects on items currently in your arsenal, a great way to increase your combat effectiveness. We'll spend a bit more time on permanent unlocks and customization in the replayability portion of the review, so keep watching for that. Graphics aren't the key ingredient in Dead Cells, but the purposefully pixelated characters and relatively simple, clean environments really play homage to the games we played and loved as kids. That being said, the animated effects such as breathing fire, lightning and ice are all very well put together. Sound effects are simple but really well done. The music is good and definitely appropriate given the style of game. Additionally, the thin layer of ambient noise quietly on display is also quite good, adding some further immersion to the mix. Again, while not the main ingredient to the game, the sound is another important element of the overall recipe. The same can be said for the story, it, it does lay the groundwork for the game, but its simplicity just helps to further highlight what the developer focused the most time and effort on. There are bits and pieces of background lore, statues, secret rooms and other prisoners found throughout the game that just help to thicken things up a little, but it's kept pretty light for the most part. As we start to move on to the more important ingredients of Dead Cells, we start to see more of what the game is all about. This game is fun, hands down the best part of the game. It's not particularly easy, but easy enough to jump into and have some fun with while you've learned to better control your character and advance your understanding of the game. As you progress and further hone your skills, the game gets progressively more difficult, but not to the point of absolute frustration. And if you hit that point, there is the assist mode, which allows you to further customize difficulty. It's a newer addition to the game, but it's there to make the game more accessible to a wider audience. The game is at times extremely fast paced, while at other times not so much. I really love how you can tailor your playing style to the equipment available and to each situation presented. Fast and taking risks or slow and calculated, feel free to march at the speed of your own drum. The next most important ingredient here is replayability. 
The evolving and ever-changing gameplay is huge and offers up endless hours of gaming for those of us who fell in love with the game. There's always something a little different in every run to help prevent the game from going stale. Between spending cells, unlocking health, weapons, item, and mutation availability, there's also a host of permanent unlocks that affect the level designs themselves, which can be unlocked as you play. There are stores and shops, a custom game mode, there's teleportation and beanstalks that aid in accessing new or hidden parts of each level. There's even a new ability such as climbing walls. Oh, and let's not leave out the daily challenge against other community members. A great way to help hone your skills and compare them with other gamers. The game offers up quite a bit of customization to tailor the game to suit your needs. Between changing character outfits, the custom game mode, difficulty levels, and a huge variety of options, mods, and available bonuses. There's also a handful of DLC packages adding even more biomes, outfits, and other additional content. At first glance, or even watching a trailer or two, this game doesn't seem to look all that impressive. But after starting the game up, playing a few runs, and getting a taste for what's on offer, I have to say, I'm impressed. It's a well thought out game that combines a number of key ingredients that combine to make a hell of a game. For anyone who enjoys platformers, roguelikes, or Metroid style games, this is a can't miss title and surely to be enjoyed for many hours over. It also breathes nostalgia for those of us who grew up on the consoles of the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. For me, it's a little of both.